morning, everyone. Welcome to Family Worship Christian Church. We're glad you're here. We came to praise the Lord and grow in strength. Amen. So if you can, would you please stand up? Let's worship our King. Did you come to lift his name? Came to lift the name of Jesus. Lift your name. Lift your name. 
Lift your name. We're gonna sing and pray and shout to you. Come and dance. Yes, I 
last weekend and I was thinking about what if the Lord did come back yesterday what would he have found us doing thank you Lord so that's a question for us today as we were singing that I got that question what would he have found us doing yesterday what would he have found us doing in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening? What would he have found us doing? If there is anything that you're answering to that question that says, Oh Lord, I need you to be, I need your strength in that area. This is how it happens. When we sing Alleluia, we are strong. So could we sing that one more time? When I sing Alleluia, I am strong. We are strong to let go of that that's knocking on the door, keeping us from being ready for Christ. Let go of it. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. That would be the word today is let it go. I sing hallelujah. I am strong.
So, Father, I ask you right now that you would continue to help us, Lord, to help us walk among those who are without, to help us, Lord, be the testimony, to be the Bible that many people can only see. Father, that we would continue to stand strong in the power of your might in those areas that seem so less than what we want. And I thank you, Father. We give you glory. We sing praises to your name because you have delivered us from this day into your marvelous light. Hallelujah. And there is nothing that would so easily beset us anymore at this time. Oh, that the Lord of hosts would find us living in his goodness and in his mercy and his blessing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. This call goes out to ministers of reconciliation. The Bible says, according to Corinthians, that we are ministers of reconciliation that we are ambassadors to reconcile others unto him. So Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for the people that you brought in our path. We thank you for the people that you've connected us with. Some are weaker in the faith than others. Some are stronger than we are. So Father, we thank you, Lord, that we're in this together with you. And I thank you, Lord, that you bring us through each and everything. And I thank you, Lord, that we have a word in season and that we're bold to give testimony unto you by faith in Jesus' name. By faith in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord God, for the salvations this week. We thank you that we are the laborers that you are sending across other people's path this week. And we thank you, Lord, for the good news that goes forth from this church, from your throne. And I thank you for it. What an awesome privilege it is to walk as you walk. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you would like prayer today, if you'd like someone to stand in prayer with you today, please come forward and we'd be happy to pray for you. If you would, while the song please, please do. It is good to hook up with each other in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Bye. 
about this uh, teaching that's coming up today because Pastor John is going to bring a message about the Holy Spirit in marriage. And I think it'll be awesome. So are you ready? Will you you put a draw on the gift, would you please? Put a draw on the gift as he presents that because I believe there are things that will set people free here today. And I think that it'll be revolutionary, life-changing, If not only we receive it, but we apply it. In Jesus' name, let's by faith say amen to that too. So welcome to you for Family Worship Christian Church. If this is the first time you have ever been here, would you quickly raise your hand? Because we have ushers who will get a welcome packet in your hand. Let's give them a hand clap. We're glad you're here. Welcome to FWCC. We're a friendly family church. We believe that God has given us a mission to go and teach my people faith and that we will live together, love and worship him and continue to reach our world for Jesus Christ. 
So we're glad you're here. In the middle of that pamphlet is a little welcome card. If you'll take a few minutes during these quick announcements to fill that out and put it, uh, we'll actually bring it to the bookstore uh, at the end of the service and we'll have a visitor's gift for you. So welcome again. We're glad you're here. Come on back to see us. You know, God sets people in the church body as he sees fit. So it's always good to get to know the ones that God's going to set you right in the middle. We need the gifts that you bring. We um, are connected in the spirit and we are moving uh, in our gifts to reach the world. And I, uh, I can't just tell you that it seems like the longer uh, we walk this walk of faith, it seems like the more and more we get the opportunity to stand for what we believe in. And I've got to tell you this, by, and I believe it's by the Spirit of God. You will either stand in what you believe in or you will fall in an area that the enemy wants you to fall in. And I am so glad that we teach messages here and we stand on the word of God because his word will never compromise. Have you found that out? His word doesn't adjust. His word doesn't help us when we feel like it, like changing it. His word is true and truth is what we are here to receive. So that's a good thing. We'll have groups to help you. We know that there are bumpy roads, just like if you're taking an airplane, sometimes there's bumps along the way. We know that things happen in life and we are here to walk alongside of you. There are many things that you can get involved in in this church. Tomorrow night at five o'clock, we have healing school. If you are believing God for healing in your body, you will hear good news of how the Lord has already healed you by Minister Gloria. You will hear that at 5 o'clock right here on Monday night. Because prayer is so vital, corporate prayer is so vital, at 6 o'clock you'll have an opportunity to join with prayer warriors who are going to take this thing to prayer. Our mission, our corporate direction, and how we fit into the whole body of Christ. So that's at 6 o'clock. Then Wednesday, there's Wednesday morning, there's Women of the Word. It's 10 a.m. We're starting a new series on who we are in Christ. Now, the more we find out who we are in Christ, the less we'll let some of those little things just get in the way of who we are. When we see, ladies, when we see our worth in his eyes, things change. And so that starts at 10 a.m. this Wednesday morning who we are in Christ. You don't want to miss it. Wednesday night, we have our hour of power. We have youth group. If you are a youth here or you know a youth between the ages of approximately 12, 13 years old to 17, this is a good place to be on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. And last but not least, there's so many other groups. Get your calendar. Find out what's going on. There's no reason to struggle in an area without getting help to come alongside of you, all right? That's what we're here to do. So welcome to you. We're glad you're here. Pastor John is going to take the announcements, and together we're filling in for Millie. All right? We're together. We're filling in for Millie. Well, they must think I have a big mouth because I have two mics up here. <laughs> no, no. It's not that big. We want to um, take a moment and receive our tithes and offerings for Family Worship Christian Church this morning. And I always encourage people, you know, about this time, <clears throat> just to kind of look around. And uh, if you haven't had a chance to walk around the church and look around and just see all the cool things we have, um, we have a lot for a small church. Did you know that? In fact, this might be one of the coolest small churches in the city. This might be one of the coolest small churches in the nation because we just have so many neat things here. The reason we do is because of your giving. It's not because of uh, Denise and myself, Dee. It's really because of you and your faithfulness to give and bless. And as a rule, generally speaking, September and our fall months are usually our hardest months here. They're usually our worst months when people either quit giving or they go on vacation, they don't come back, we don't hear from you for a while. Uh, we need to hear from you. We really do this month so that we stay current on everything. If you like everything the way it is right now, I kind of do. I think it's pretty cool. We got a great music. We got a great children's program. Everything is really done really well and with excellence. And please continue to give and please continue to support us. So 
Hold your tithes and offerings up. I'm just going to pray a general prayer right now. Believe God right now. You know, the Bible says as we give, it's given back unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And we don't give to get something back. We give because we love God and we love Jesus, don't we? Amen. You know, and he has divine ownership over it all. The only thing he asks us for is 10% of what he gives us. And so, to me, I mean, 10% is, I mean, if he asked me for 20, I'd give him 20. If he asked me for 50, I'd give him 50 because I just love God that much, don't you, this morning? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to give. We thank you that as we give, it's given back unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over that men do give unto our bosom. So we give you all glory, honor, and praise now for any good that takes place as a result of this offering this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Which one do you want? Praise the Lord. Amen. Nice to see everybody here today. I'm just going to set this over here if I can. If I need it, I'll grab it. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit in the recovery right now. If you didn't know, uh, this week I got bit in the voice box by a brown recluse. So we did Wednesday night, you know, and my, my voice was kind of a little funky, and it still probably is. And, where he said, you know your voice cracked and you sound like Mr. Haney. You know, was, <laughs> like Green Acres, you know? You know, I got, a, I got a new tractor to sell you, Mr. Douglas. <laughs> so, but, um, well, we didn't have our guitar player this morning, and so 
Maurice said he could play the guitar part, so did you enjoy his antics on the keyboard this morning? I bring that up for this reason. We're running a special. We have this amazing water in the room that you can buy for 10 bottles a bottle. $10 a bottle, you'll be able to play just like that. You won't even have to practice. How many believe that, amen? Nobody believes me. I don't think we're going to sell too many bottles from Mary's today. But the Lord is good, isn't he? Let's thank him for who he is this morning, shall we? I just love him, don't you? We thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. We thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. for the Holy Spirit this morning, aren't you? That he's here, that he's in our midst. And you know, if you think about it, we're going to talk about marriage here this morning, but you remember when you were younger, because nobody here is really that old. And you used to go swimming and you held the beach ball down under the water, you know, and then you let the ball go, and what does the ball do? It pops up, doesn't it? And sometimes it'll go high above the water, you know? And the thing to remember is this, that the Holy Spirit is the air on the inside of our beach ball. He's the air on the inside of us. And it doesn't matter how high the water rises, guess what the beach ball does? just keeps floating, doesn't it? just keeps rising right with it. As a matter of fact, you can't drown a beach ball that's full of air. Can you? No, that's why the Bible tells us, you know, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, that we're to be being filled with the Spirit. Because we leak so bad, isn't that true? You know? Now, on the other hand, if you've ever had a beach ball that was a little low on air, you can hold it underwater pretty easy, can't you? Right, if it gets flat, well, the water can literally overcome it. But as long as we stay full of the Holy Spirit, guess what? It doesn't matter how many catastrophes happen in the world. It doesn't matter how many earthquakes, how many floods, how many fires, how many devastating things. We just glide right above it as believers in Christ that know who they are. Can you say amen today? Amen. You know. Now, another thing, Eric, is... is Went for a ride on the bike, D and I did yesterday, on a bicycle, on our bicycles. And I found this to be, you know, that bicycles ride a lot easier when the tires got air in them. Have you ever rode a bike that had low air in the tire? Man, you have to labor to pedal that sucker, don't you? You know? But boy, I'm telling you, pump that thing up, and, and that thing will almost pedal itself. And you know, the same is true with us as Christian believers in Christ. We must stay full of the Holy Spirit if we are to live and move and have our being in Him. Otherwise, it gets so hard, doesn't it? You know, Jesus, well, the Bible said, you know, Jesus said, you know, take my yoke upon me for my yoke is easy, right? Why is His yoke so easy? Well, if we're full of the Holy Ghost, 
you know, uh, we can move and have our being somewhat easily in him. But I'm telling you, man, the way of the transgressor is hard, isn't it? It is one tough road. Some of you have been on that road. If you've been on that road, you don't just have enough sense to take the first exit and you head the other way. Amen. Amen. And so we want to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit today in marriage and and um because he really is our air, he's our pneuma, he's our the air that we breathe, the air that we move in. But you know, in Ephesians chapter three, verse sixteen, the Holy Spirit, you see helps us in the area of marriage. If there was ever a time in the world that we needed the help of God in marriages is now. Because society, the devil, is on an all-out assault against the human family. And one of the ways he does that, of course, is try to confuse people. Did you know that, you know? We've talked about this. I don't need to go back into this, but you know, trying to get men to think they're women and women to think they're men and trying to get kids to think they don't got to listen to their parents no more. And then if the parents discipline them, you know, they throw them in jail for abuse. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. When I, when I was a young man, a young lad, boy, my dad had some techniques that wouldn't be accepted by today. But you know, they probably weren't all right, but I turned out all right. I'm still here. So, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, notice what it says today. Uh, it says that he would grant unto you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. I've said before, and I'll say it again, you know, the definition of a good marriage is two servants in love. The definition of a bad marriage is two selfish people in love. I'm telling you, you get two people that are filled with the Spirit of God, there's absolutely nothing or no one that can stop them. Amen. Look at this scripture with me also today. And that would be Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. We need the Holy Spirit in our marriages. We need Him in our lives. We need Him in raising our children, don't we? Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. Now, you got to know that if someone is leading you, they're going before you. You get two people that are being led by the Spirit of God, they'll go in the same direction. That's why you know the Bible says, don't be yoked together with unbelievers. Because you see, an unbeliever is going to want to go the wrong direction. They're going to want to go the other way. Because the direction of God makes no sense to them. So we must be yoked with believers. And we must be led by the Spirit of God. Let's look at this scripture also today if we could. And that would be John chapter 16. We could look at this verse 8. John chapter 16 verse 8 says, And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. You know, I, I think one of the things that the Holy Spirit really helps us do in, this, in the area of marriage, but just in the area of life, if you're not married today, is just, I, He helps us see things for what they are. Because, you know, once again, the world is trying to manipulate the way that we look at things, isn't it? It's trying to make us look at, you know, and, and if you want to know what the world is, be, what their minds are being renewed to, they're being renewed to television that's on right now. The evening sitcoms. But we must renew our mind to the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit will help us see things soundly so that when someone says, you know what, this is okay. I, I mean, it, the world has changed since the Bible was written. If you've got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, it ought to be screaming with a loud voice, No, that's not true. If God said it two years, two thousand years ago, He means it today as well. Amen. Look at this scripture as well with me today. It's in um, Galatians chapter 5, verses 15 through 16. 
Galatians chapter 5, verses 15 through 16. I hope this is helping you a little. But he says, if you divide, bite and devour one another, he says, take heed lest uh, that you be not consumed one of another. He says, this I say, he says, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, let's stop on that just for a moment. And let's just ponder this for a moment. You know, because when we think of the subject, you know, fulfilling the lust of the flesh, you know, immediately in most of our minds, we think of perhaps an improper relationship with someone of the opposite sex. Isn't that true? If you're in marriage, you think, well, the lust of the flesh would be, you know, someone going out and having an affair with somebody else or, you know, something else going on that's it's ungodly. But go back to the verse. I want you to show you something on this. Go back to the verse before this, verse 15. Yeah, we could. Now notice what he says here. He says, uh, he says, if you bite and devour one another. Now, what does it mean to bite and devour one another? You know, is he talking about two people, you know, they're not going to get in a fist fight. They're going to take their dentures out and try to Bite it. No, he's not talking about that, is he? No, he's talking about people assaulting one another or committing the act of murder with their words towards one another. You know, you can really harm someone with their words, you know that? And you know, people in marriage oftentimes, you know, have you ever been married before and got into what we call intense fellowship? You know what that is? That's a Christian way of saying we got into a fight. We don't want to call it a fight, so we call it intense fellowship. Amen. And and oftentimes what happens in that that you know is you'll start saying and, and if you're not married, this applies to you as well in any relationship. But you know you'll start saying something to somebody, and then a, a, as you keep feeding into the fire, the fire elevates. And all of a sudden, words start coming out. And all of a sudden, you're saying things you had no intention of saying. And all of a sudden, it's like a blaze that's burning out of control. And I say, why do we need the Holy Spirit? Well, he says, what happens, you know, you'll literally be consumed by one another. I talked about last week, you know, one of the greatest reasons for divorce is uh, uh, not allowing that other person to escape with their dignity. In other words, you're going to have the last word, you know, and you're more interested, you know, in proving a point than you are making a difference. And so uh, he, he says, be, take heed or be careful. You're not consumed with one another. But now look at the next verse, how this applies in, because he says, he says, this I say, this I say. In other words, these two verses are connected. He says, this I says, he says, if you walk in the spirit, you're, he says, you're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh, but it wouldn't be wrong to say this as well. If you walk in the spirit, you're not going to bite and devour one another. You know, you show me somebody, you know, that says they're holy. We've all sometimes had a false assumption of our own holiness, but then you go out, you know, and you get into a verbal lashing with somebody. Maybe it's a spouse. Maybe it's somebody else, you know, that just identifies the fact right there that you're not walking in the Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to help us put a watch over our tongues. Because we can hurt people with our words, can't we? We can be insensitive with our words. You know, sometimes people like me that have a quick wit and a quick humor can say things, you know, that are insensitive to somebody. And all of a sudden you realize you hurt somebody and you go like, Oh man, but they're already out there, aren't they? So we need the Holy Spirit. How many can say amen today? Let's look at this scripture as well today if we could. But it's in um, John chapter 16, verse 14. John chapter 16, verse 14. Notice what he says. He says, He shall glorify me, for he shall receive me of mine and show it unto you. The Holy Spirit will help you exhibit the glory of God in your very marriage, 
he'll cause your marriage to glorify Christ. Now, there's another scripture in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Galatians 5, 22, 23, we all know this about the fruit of the Spirit. You know, it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. He says against, just look at this, against there's no such law. You know, we can all do a kind of a checkup this morning, and we can all ask ourselves, wow, man, in, the, in my marriage, is these, are these attributes really happening? I, is this a reality? If it's not a reality, then it's not the other person that needs to make an adjustment. Maybe it's us. As a matter of fact, I've often said this, you know, if we would all focus on cleaning up our own alley rather than cleaning up someone else's, we'd have a lot of clean alleys out there, wouldn't we? And the same is true in marriage, isn't that true? If we would work on changing ourselves rather than the other person, I think we'd see some pretty marvelous things, don't you? Now, along with this today, you know, there's three steps that can really lead our marriages towards a renewed sense of intimacy. The first one is this, that we need to believe that God loves us and he desires to walk with us in oneness through the power of the Holy Spirit. God loves us. And, and, and sometimes, you know, some of us really mess up bad. As a matter of fact, at some time or another, most of us really mess up pretty bad. But we have to learn to forgive ourselves because when we ask God to forgive us, guess what he does? He forgives us, doesn't he? As a matter of fact, he calls us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we must let some things go. We must begin to see ourselves as who he says we are. Right? Then we can successfully move forward in oneness and power with the Holy Spirit. Secondly, you know, we need to confess to God our utter dependency on the Holy Spirit for power. I mean, I, I like reading self-help books, don't you? Some of them. Some of them are kind of weird. But you know, the ones that are godly and are Christian believing by Christian authors, some of them are pretty good. But I'm telling you, they'll give us some nuggets of wisdom, but at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit is our power supply. We need the Holy Spirit in our life. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. Your marriage needs the Holy Spirit. This church needs the Holy Spirit. We all need the Holy Spirit. We're starving in life without Him. And so if there's any known sin in our life, we must confess it by agreeing with God that it is sin and displeasing to Him. We don't want to grieve the Spirit of God. Number three is this. We need to draw upon God's power by faith and obedience and begin walking by the Spirit in our daily life. Every day, walk by the Spirit. In our marriages, walk by the Spirit. Now, Psalm chapter 77, verse 14. Notice what it says. Psalm 77, verse 14 says, Thou art the God that does wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among thy people. We sang it this morning, how great is our God. There's no limit to the power that our God possesses. Now, let me ask you a question this morning. How much time do you spend praying for your mate? How much time in your day do you stop and do you just pray for that other person? You know, if you're in a marriage or you're fixing to get married, I want to encourage you this morning that you need to pray for that other person. Jesus said, you know, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 29, Matthew chapter 9 verse 29 notice what he said he says then he touched their eyes and he said according to your faith be it unto you 
Are you releasing and exercising your faith for that other person? You know, the Bible talks a lot about, gosh, how wives and how people can be an aid in the process of changing someone else just by their own behavior. You know, I'm convinced of this, you know, it, it, it will just learn to bridle our tongue. That's probably 50% of the fight right there. If you want to have a better marriage, just learn to bridle your own tongue. That's 50% of it right there. And then if you begin to believe God and begin to speak what the word says over that other person, releasing your faith. And literally taking the time to pray for that person and to thank God for that person. You might say, well, I'm not married right now. I don't have a partner. Well, then do it with your kids. Anybody want to see your kids change? Want to see them go to work? Guess what? According to your faith, be it unto you. You can't make somebody do something. But let me tell you something. You can greatly influence the outcome of their life by your own behavior. Now, the Bible makes it clear that um, God wants his people to stay married. And when our vows are tested with sickness or poverty or tough times, you know, when we ask God, the Bible says he hears us. When we call upon him. And during our darkest moments, the Psalms remind us that God understands our situation and he'll help us. How many know he's our helper? The Holy Spirit is your helper today. And in marriages, you know, the hardest times can be times when we experience God's amazing rewards in the most amazing ways. There's a scripture in Isaiah chapter 64, verses 4 and 5. Let's look at that today if we could. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4 and 5 says, it says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by ear, neither have seen O oh God, beside thee, what he has prepared for them that love him. I'm telling you, God has a reward prepared for you that you can't even imagine. God can literally take your life here on earth and make it better than you've ever imagined. God can make your marriage undeniably better when you pray for your spouse. So. With this incentive, you know, we have to really realize that it's important to pray for that person on a regular basis each day. James chapter 5 verse 16 teaches us that the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and wonderful results. Notice what it says. He says to confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you can be healed. He says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, and that would be a righteous woman as well, avails much. In other words, it has great power available to it. How many could say with an uplifted hand, without a doubt, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Amen? If you're born again, if you're in Him, you are His righteousness. Now, many things we could say, Another point that we could say today is this. Well, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, notice what it says in verse 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. He tells us to pray without ceasing. Have you ever wondered about that scripture just a little bit? How in the world can we just continually pray? You know, and we've talked about before, about praying for things and the order and the way that we should pray for things that the real truth about it is, you know, you really only need to pray about something once, but after you prayed about it, if you've received it, then you can continually give thanks for it. And one of the ways that we can pray is pray the prayer of thankfulness without ceasing. You know, you may be here this morning <coughs> believing God for a miracle for your life right now, for your marriage, for a relationship, for a child, and maybe God has spoken to you that you've received your miracle here this morning. Or maybe when you came up here to pray and, and our prayer workers prayed for you and you received. Then every time you think about it, you think about on whatever the date is today, 
in September, whatever time it was, that you received and you thank God for it without ceasing each and every moment. There's another scripture in Psalm chapter 27, verse 14. Notice what it says. He says, to wait on the Lord. He says, be of good courage. In other words, do not allow fear to precipitate your being. He says, and he shall strengthen your heart. How many could say with an uplifted hand, man, I could use my heart strengthened. I've been beat up. This week was a rough one, Pastor John. Well, you know, it has been rough for some folks, hasn't it? How many are glad we have power? How many are glad we have water? How many are glad that, you know, we have electricity here this morning? We're not out on the slab. So, no matter how bad we think we have it, someone always has it worse, don't they? So we always have something to be thankful for. The Bible says, you know, that if we'll wait on him and be of good courage, he will strengthen our hearts. And then he goes on to say, wait, he says, I say on the Lord. You know, you may be very discouraged. Maybe you're watching by film or on the internet or you're here this morning and maybe you're in a situation with your marriage that you're very, very discouraged in right now. Let me tell you that this promise will work. If you'll wait on the Lord, if you'll be of good courage, you don't allow fear to get in your life, He will strengthen your heart and according to your faith, be it unto you. Turn to the person next to you and say this, according to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, be it unto you. Praise God. Now, what do you think is a great identifier of what your faith is or where it's at? It's the words that come out of your mouth. You know, my wife posted something really cool. It went something like this. If the words you spoke today or maybe this week, were tattooed on your body, would you still be beautiful? Sila. If the words you spoke were tattooed on your body, would you still be beautiful? We all know the scripture in Mark eleven twenty three. Notice what it says. He says, For verily I say unto you that whoever shall say, we sang it this morning, if you'll say to the mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but believe those things which he says shall come to pass, he'll have what? Whatsoever it is you say. Look at the next verse. For verily I say unto you, therefore I say unto you, whatso things you desire when you pray, what? I didn't hear you. You believe. What do you believe? What you just prayed, right? May I give you a deep revelation this morning. If you don't believe what you're praying for, stop praying. You are wasting your time. You are wasting your breath. You are confusing your own spirit. Just stop. But I'm telling you what, if you will believe that what you pray for, God actually hears. How many know God's not hard of hearing? You don't have to yell. Some people think, you know, well, it isn't going to be effective unless I scream at the top of my lungs. God isn't hard of hearing. He hears the faintest whisper. Matter of fact, I think some of those quiet prayers are some of the best ones, don't you? 
Matter of fact, I don't ever hear, read anything in the Gospels about Jesus going up on a mountain yelling. Nothing against yelling if you want to yell. I mean, go for it. But I don't think you have to. I think he hears just fine. I want to encourage you this morning that you pray for the person you're married to or you're about to be married to or if you're not married and you don't, you've had enough, you don't want any more, then pray for your kids. You might say, well, I'm not married. I don't want to get married. I don't got any kids. What should I do? Then pray for me. I covet your prayers. How's that? We're not going to let you off the hook either. We'll take the prayer, won't we? If you don't like me, pray for Maurice. Everybody likes him. He needs to help more than all of us. No, I'm just kidding. He says, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you will receive them. Believe. 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 He says, and you'll have them. They say, well, you know, I prayed that my husband or my wife had quit cussing and they're still quit cussing. What should I do? Should I keep praying? No, start thinking. If you already prayed, if you already believe, now start thanking God. Start thanking God, you know. Maybe you're believing God, you know, for that person to, to stop cussing. Or maybe you're believing God for, you know, the person you live with to quit dipping snuff. Now don't say, Jesus, take that snuff away. Because Jesus don't dip snuff. He ain't going to take it. But just pray that that person will have enough sense to put it away. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe it's another habit. Maybe it's that person has a tobacco addiction. So pray and believe God. Bind that, break the power of that addiction. Then thank God every time you think about it that that addiction is broken. Or maybe that person has a drug addiction. Maybe they're addicted to marijuana, pharmacaea. Break the power over that thing. Thank God every time you think about it. Oh, I'm so thankful you know that my husband or my wife or my son or my daughter is not affected or bound by pharmacaea, is not affected or bound by alcoholism, is not affected or bound by snuff, is not affected or bound by pornography. Am I hitting home? Let's work with the Word of God rather than counteractive to the Word of God. Now may I say this in close. Brother Hagen used to say this. Faith never gets in a hurry. You know, folks that pray and if they don't see the results just like this, you know, I kind of almost chuckle inside of me because I think, well, first of all, they don't really believe it in the first place. But sometimes, you know, the Lord will just kind of hold back with folks like that for a while, you know, just to see if they're going to stick around. Amen. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You ever believe God for something, you know, and it didn't come just like that, you know, you didn't have microwave answer. So it had to go in the oven for a while. Now you may have eventually received it. Maybe some of you are still believing on it. But the truth is, if you will believe and thank, you will have exactly what it is you're saying. You know. Do not get frustrated when your answers don't appear overnight. Because after all, remember how long it took for God to get to you. Look at how long it took him to change you. Look at how long he had to work on you to stop working on that habit that no one even knew about but you and him. So, give the other person a little space. Anytime you get angry, anytime you get in the flesh, you have just lost your testimony. And you've hurt your faith. The Bible says faith works by love. It doesn't say faith works by getting mad and yelling at somebody. It says faith works by what? By love. How does love act? 
we just looked at it and we'll close with this Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23 well, this will help you with your marriage partner he says but the fruit of the spirit is I've heard it taught this way before but they said actually this verse could have been taught this way that the fruit of the spirit is love period in all those other attributes joy peace long-suffering goodness gentleness faith and meekness and temperance are all really attributes of love itself now I don't think either way is particularly wrong I think you could say the fruit of the Spirit is love or I think you could say the fruit of the Spirit is love and all these other attributes are attributes of love but if you want to know if you're walking in love or not just ask yourself do I have joy well, that, well, you might say, oh, it's different, Pastor John. It's two di different things. I can walk in love and just be ugly. No, you can't. You can't walk in love and not have any peace about you. Can you? I mean, if you don't have peace, you're not in love. There's peace about love. You know, if you're not long-suffering with someone, I want to put it up in the message translation once, Brett. We'll close with this. Maybe may they are looking at. He says, you're the God who makes things happen. Well, that's good. <laughs> but the one we were just on, whatever it was, Galatians 5.23. If we can get it in the message. What happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our life, much the same as fruit appears in an orchard. Oh, I love this time of the year, don't you? We're getting ready for the harvest grapes. Those big, fat, juicy, awesome, sweet grapes. Oh, I told you that because try to be a harvest grape in God. Amen. Call yourself Gilbert. He's as much the same way <laughs> that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things a sense of compassion in the heart, a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Legalism is helpless in bringing this about. It only gets in the way. Oh, I like that, don't you? Let's close with that word picture this morning of being a fruit of His. If I could ask you to bow your heads for a moment, close your eyes very quickly. You say, I don't know everybody here, but if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, or if you have and you've walked away, then the wisest thing you can do today is to make your life right with Him. So if you'd say that with an uplifted hand today, I want to pray with you. Anyone here today say, Pastor John, I need to get my life right with Him. Anyone at all? Look to the left, look to the right. Everybody here born again, saved. Know that they're going to heaven. Well, that's good. That's a pretty good bunch, isn't it? Let's sing this. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield.
Well, if you, have, if, if you just start acting really sweet this week and your spouse asks you, where in the world did you get that? You can say, I heard it from the grapevine. I'm just trying to be a fruit of this. <laughs> Let's stand to our feet today. Grab the hands next to that person. We are the champions, my friend. And we'll keep on fighting to the end. We are. guys thank you for coming special guest on base this morning mr derek sanders give it up to him